Hi again then guys, and welcome to the 56th episode of Weekend Warriors on Gran Turismo 3 for this particular episode, and of course we don't do much Gran Turismo 3 related content because there aren't that many cars on the game which are unique to it. Now this one is not unique to Gran Turismo 3, and just before we get into the review, I again want to apologise for the choppy frame rate of the video. I can't find a way around it at the moment. The recording is fine, the gameplay is fine, it's only when it goes through the editor to cut off the black bars around the screen that it becomes an issue. So the only options are really to have it this way, or to have it in a stupid little 4x3 box with a massive black screen around the sides. So, I don't know what you guys want. This seems to be the best that we can currently get. I've sped up the video a little bit to kind of help with it, but still. Now that aside, you could always just listen to the episode instead, of course. But, this particular vehicle is not exclusive to Gran Turismo 3. It was also featured on Gran Turismo 2. And the car is the BMW 328Ci Coupe. It's a vehicle which I personally found easy to forget was on Gran Turismo 3 because I never used it back in the day. On Gran Turismo 2, you do have the race modification available for this car. It gives it kind of M3 GTR style colours with the white, red and blue, a wing, kind of a body kit but not a crazy one, and interestingly the price is exactly the same on GT3 as it was on Gran Turismo 2, 50,690 credits. That's a reasonable price, especially for something like a Beamer. So the question is, what do you actually get? Well, of course, it doesn't have a PP level on either game that it's featured on, because they didn't do that back then. The engine is a 2.8 litre, of course it's rear-wheel drive, and you can turbocharge the engine up to a pretty decent 436 horsepower and 425 foot-pounds of torque. And I personally feel, I don't know about you guys, that that torque figure is actually more impressive than the power. The power's pretty good, probably what you'd expect. The torque, though, is quite high. Now, the turbo, of course, helps with that. If it were a naturally aspirated car, like the M3s later became, that's not going to help in terms of torque. This one actually has more torque than most of the other M3s have later on in the series, for that very reason. Now, as far as weight, it's pretty good, actually. It weighs 1,245 kilos with the full weight loss package, and that's not much more than a WRC rally car. That's pretty good. And the horsepower per tonne is good because of it. 350 for a sports coupe is not bad at all. So it seems, at least on paper, that for 50 grand, or basically 51 grand, it's a pretty good deal. So what's it actually like to drive? And is it worth buying on either Gran Turismo 2 or 3? Well, as far as Gran Turismo 2 goes, you do have the race option, which is always nice. I know people love BMW race cars on Gran Turismo. So on that game, it's kind of an option. For those who are fans of the car, certainly give it a look, but it's not an essential purchase. On Gran Turismo 3, it's a bit different. There aren't a huge amount of sports coupes, especially European ones, that this car can go up against. So overall, it does feel a little bit more specialised than it would were it on Gran Turismo 6, instead where we have plenty of luxury coupes, sports coupes from various countries. As far as handling goes, it's pretty good. You can definitely get the tail out. It's not the best handling of coupes, but it's certainly not bad. It's smooth, it's pretty easy to drive, even for beginners, and as I said, you can drift it very easily. So if you're into trying to drift on older Gran Turismo games, you should definitely give this car a look. In terms of straight line performance, you can, as you can see in this video, comfortably get it up around 250, 260, even 270 kilometers per hour. That's pretty good. That's over 150 miles per hour which, for the power, and for most cars on the game that it's going to go up against, is good enough. The acceleration, again, is nothing to write home about, of course, but it's not bad. And in the grand scheme of things, cars like this, at least for me personally, used to kind of get left to the wayside on older Gran Turismo games, because it was more about the race cars, the big powerful machines, and these lower level, or sometimes mid-level coupes actually, suffered the most, because the small slow cars had the advantage of being small and slow for those races, and obviously the big powerful cars and the race cars you use a lot anyway. It's these cars in the middle which kind of get left out, or they did in my Gran Turismo playing experience anyway, the cars that aren't quick enough 
to win against race cars, but they're too powerful and too big and too heavy to go up against small sports cars, and so they're in a little bit of a no man's land. Not completely, there are definitely races for vehicles like this, but again, on Gran Turismo 3 it's not an essential purchase, but if you want to go back to try out cars which Gran Turismo used to have that they don't now, this is certainly a notable one. If Gran Turismo 3 were a tour guided thing, this would be one of the highlights that I would point out. On Gran Turismo 2 not so much, because there are more beamers to choose from, but on GT3, certainly. So overall, if you're playing either of those games, give the car a check out if it sounds interesting to you. But that's it for this pick overall, and as always, thanks for watching.